Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. My little pony, more than friendships, guys. Oh. Uh, probably my fault for not stating which one we will be doing, but yay, uh, let's do this one first then. Also joining oh. us today. Oh, wait. <laughs> Oh, you want to do Friendship is Magic number 99 first? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, was think, no. I was thinking about that, but... Let's just go with Transformers first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we can dig it! <laughs> also joining us today is Jacob. Hey, everybody. And once again, I'm, I'm on the short end of the stick with this one. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. So, um... <laughs> totally... Uh, the, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. The stick is nostalgia! Just <laughs> let it whack you over the head! <laughs> Oh, Let man. it permeate your thoughts. So, um, totally, uh, Silver, Silver kind of derailed the, th- uh, the show, so, yay! <laughs> okay, um, getting back on track, uh, in today's episode review, we are going to re- uh, review, uh, title is a bit confusing, but I'll try and read it off the cover. Transformers, My Little Pony, Friendship in Disguise. Or, on the wiki, yeah, it states, it. My Little Pony slash... Transformers. Mm. <coughs> Pick one. Uh, okay, know. you're really gonna believe the wiki. But the wiki's good. The film wiki is good. But it's still a wiki. It's like it's the start of knowledge, <laughs> not the end. True, but eh. but anywho, in this issue, Queen Chrysalis accidentally brings the Autobots and Decepticons to Equestria, and Rarity and Archie team up against Starscream. <laughs> Alrighty then, so our first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? <clears throat> this is hitting all my nostalgia buttons. I mean, Transformers was the uh, the entertainment of my childhood. You mentioned any cartoon that really left a lasting impact. It's Transformers. You will believe a child will cry for a truck robot as he dies. And everybody hating on Rodimus Prime. Well, that's who, but we'll work on that. <laughs> uh, poor Rodimus getting the bad end of the stick. Like, he was he was the hip and cool car. And th- the thing is, like, they mentioned adding new cars to sell new toys. If I'm not mistaken, Rodimus was always there, right? Like, he was in the series proper before uh, the movie? No, he was introduced in the movie. What? Bumblebee uh, is, is probably the longest-lasting Autobot. Oh, man, really? Now, so Rodimus was movie? Rodimus was movie. Oh, First man. is Hot Rod, yeah, yeah, yeah. then Rodimus. Oh, I... oh, wow. That's a bad move. Oh, yeah, yeah. People resented the hell out of Rodimus for c- coming on the scene, contributing to Optimus's death. Most people lay the entire blame on on, Rod, on Hot Rod, but I would say it's uh, 50-50. Oh, man, yeah. It's, see, I, I always thought that he was kind of uh, the quote-unquote uh, fresh upstart that's always been there from season whatever before the movie came out. Oh, man, that's a bad move. To be honest, they should have done it with Bumblebee. Yes, well, they've been trying that ever since, I guess. And it kind of worked. Uh, the TV series, uh, the 3D one, I think, where Bumblebee had to command a platoon of red tag uh, bots and Optimus Prime was under him. That was kind of cool. Oh, well, that was... Yeah, that was 3D, I guess. Robots in disguise. And it, it uh and at the time like uh Prime wanted him to take charge of his platoon and whatnot and um kind of uh nurture him to become a leader and so on. And it was kind of fun. It was kinda of fun to see that. I never saw the movie. <clears throat> never saw the movie. Oh dude, come on, it's great. come on, if you ever wanted to scar a kid the Transformers movie starts, its opening act is the brutal and graphic destruction of a planet <laughs> and all the inhabitants. The only way it gets more freaky is if you watch the Japanese dub, where they add screaming. <laughs> yeah, but you're forgetting something. I'm from the Balkans. We've been there during the 90s. <laughs> Got you there, Silver. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you want to scar some children... 
I got the goods. A safer way to scar children. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, Jake, what about you? Uh, what first impressions of the comic? Yeah, well, once again, I fall short on this comic series, but I'm like in the generations uh, where I was out of place because I didn't grow up in the 80s watching American TV. Last time I'm at, the, I'm at the loss because I used to be a huge fan of Transformers as a kid. It was probably one of the few uh, TV shows that came out uh, in the 90s in my country because, one, as mentioned before, I'm from the Balkans. One thing that my country got lucky that we were stuck in the war for only like 10 days before the Yugoslav uh, People's Army decided to <laughs> focus on bigger priorities than us. So... Mm. Yeah, we got better television than them, uh, but, well, the first thing that I saw was Transformers, and I think it was season two, because I recall that there were uh, there was a 3D in- intro, that that's from the, those series, so do you remember? A 3D intro? Yeah. Oh god, wait, did the, did the cartoon have, like, these really annoying, uh computer panels and you were like watching it on a quote space cube i i think so oh you poor soul (laughs) why you got the that was called transformers generation two and all it did was take an old that all it did was take an old cartoon and slap on these really annoying uh distracting and intrusive graphics as like you would Feel through the cube to an, to the other end just to have another scene. Oh God! It was it was a massive disappointment, and just so dumb. Oh, wow. I, I was probably like five years old. I didn't know any better. Oh, well, I I know better than than you at the time. So I I weep for you. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, this is so sad. Yeah. Well, I was a huge fan of Transformers as a kid. I even got a few Autobots, but unfortunately, as I got older, I just sort of drifted away from it, and the memories kind of went on it. I think the anime is probably at fault for this. There's anime? Sorry, because you, wa- you were watching a freaking space cube. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is so sad. Oh, Jacob, I bite for you. <laughs> yes. Oh, boys. Oh, but, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, for this crossover, we have two teams working on it, and it's easy to guess that one team is from the MLP staff and the other team is for uh, Transformers staff, since it's not a uh, noticeable uh, detailed art change halfway through. Also, uh, the one that's working for the second half, uh, Ian Flynn... That name sounds familiar for some reason. Isn't that isn't that the guy that's uh, the writer for the Sonic comics or something? Quite possible. Let's let's see here. Honestly, I'm not sure. Ian Flynn comics. Yep, he's been, done some work. Oh, he has an internet pen name, Ian Poto. I don't know what a Poto is. Uh, he's chief writer for Archie's Sonic series since issue 160. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, and, knew, and I, I knew the name was familiar. And he shepherded it all up until the cancellation of issue 290. That was when the Archie shut down. At least when they shut down the Sonic. Yeah. Thank you, campenders. Fucking <laughs> asshole. <clears throat> wow. Well, <clears throat> I, se- I sense repression. Yeah. Don't don't hold back. <laughs> Give us all the juicy details. Well, I think that's pretty much what anyone who's ever heard of Sonic comic that they have nothing but spite for Ken Penders. Since he did the whole thing with... Uh, he went way too in depth with the whole Knuckles uh, people, the Echidnas. Like, or developed. And then he decided to do something really bullshit, like he tried it to come... Compare uh, Echidnas with Nazis or something. Oh god, that's yeah. oh, wow, that's uh, bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's some really Nazi. And then at some point, uh, I'm not sure what happened. He went into squabble with Sega over something when they tried to use uh, Echidna characters because 
Every echidna other than Knuckles that existed in Archie comics were created by him, and he wouldn't let the uh, he wouldn't let Sega use them, so they went into a uh, lawsuit I thing, and in the end, yeah, what? I think I've heard of this uh, problem before. Yeah, and this end. is what prompted the reboot of Sonic's universe. Yeah, yeah pretty much because Panders took all <laughs> the. Archie kidness with him, and now he does nothing with them. Yeah, because he can't do anything with them. <laughs> yeah, sucks to be you. And he even tried to put out so- uh, something, but God, oh God, I, I can't, I can't even think about the nightmare fuel of a video that he put out for the future project with one of the Echidna characters that he tried to rebrand or something. Mm. <laughs> no man, no man. He he he's he is missing the point of the characters. The characters are popular because of what they are, not who they are. Obviously, you can move it to another IP or move it to its own thing, but the problem is your audience are Sonic fanatics. So no. Oh yeah, he tried to. Sue, uh, he tried to sue, uh, what was it, Paramount or Sega again over the second Sonic movie because it had the Kina characters other than Knuckles. Uh, how dumb? Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome right. to our Sonic <laughs> review discussion. <laughs> well, that yeah, Okay, turned... I think I derailed the conversation for long enough. All right, anyway, um, <laughs> as for me, um, this comic was kind of a blast to read. Like I, I, I highly enjoy the interaction between the ponies and bots. Like that was fun, and um, you guys uh, hinted a bit of nostalgia of your time watching the Transformers uh, shows. So I, I think I want to chime in too. Um, as for me, I remember watching the show when I was a kid, uh, probably uh, six or something like that. And I highly enjoying it, but uh, it seems that they move to a future one. Uh, I think I was lucky that I didn't get a uh, Transformers Generation Two, but what I got instead was called um, Transformers Victory. Oh yeah. You know, I've, I haven't watched the whole of that, but that's with um, Star Saber. Yeah, Star Saber. And okay, at first I was like, wait, what? No, I was a kid. Like, I didn't really care. Like, oh, cool, 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 cool. And it was a cartoon to me because, well, um, moving animated pictures. Yeah. But as I grew older, it was an anime. And like, oh, cool. This is fun. This is amazing. And Silvers keep talking about, oh, man. Beast Wars, Beast Wars this, Beast Wars that, blah, 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 Beast Wars. And I'm like, um, okay, uh, Beast Wars is fun, I guess. But have you seen Star Saber? He is awesome. Like, he can transform into this. He can do that. Like, he can do with the lions. And like, oh, man. And I posted a, a link to his uh, 20, no, his re-release toy version. That's badass. <clears throat> See, I don't remember being blah 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 Beast Wars, but I can be. Uh, blah 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 <laughs> blah 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 Dinobot. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Crap, crap your rooster teeth reboot. <laughs> blah, blah blah blah. Crap your no, rooster but... teeth reboot. I don't think I yeah, that the... one. Oh, rooster teeth uh, has expanded for Netflix. They animated a War for Cybertron series. I can't remember that, but it did not live up to the brand. Huh? In fact, a lot of people were pretty disappointed, especially as they brought the Beast Wars into it. Oh, boy, yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, they also invited the Green Ranger to voice a character, right? That I don't recall. Huh. All right. Okay, so no problem then. Um, Anywho, getting back on track. So, yeah, um, me and Transformers, we were like friends. So, yeah, um, had a lot of memories going in. So, uh, if you have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. 
So we start off the comic with, well, in the land of Equestria, where sunshine and rainbows are abound, with talking ponies everywhere. And especially when that talking pony is Patton Oswald pony, Good complaining point. about how uh, the crossover story sh- shouldn't even happen. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Yes, which continuity is this? And boy, you think that's bad with My Little Pony? You just wait until you get into Transformers. Silver, you're still in your line. <laughs> but anywho, um, uh, what you call this? The, uh, what you call this? The, the newspaper seller says it's supposed to be fun, and when, oh man, Red and Oswald Pony try to say something. There's a big kaboom in the sky, and we see that Queen Chrysalis is trying to exact her revenge. And uh, I'm a bit confused here because uh, one of her lines says, uh, "Soon Equestria will pay, not just for my most recent imprisonment." Uh, which one was that, Silver? Do you have any idea? I think it's uh, referring that... to the what was it? Kingship is magic. The fifth issue. I'm actually of the mind that it's for her uh, being trapped in stone. At the very, very end of the series, uh, she's actually breaking free, and the Watcher Pony is like, oh, she's early. So, also, I base this more on what happens later. It seems that Twilight is in charge. Celestia and Luna are not part of this uh, series. So this appears to be under Twilight's reign, which would make Chrysalis an escapee of stone imprisonment. But Silver, didn't this uh, crossover come out long way before season nine? Uh, not way before, but a good deal before, which just means, eh, got to roll with it. Mm. Roll out. <laughs> All right, so. It's either or, so it could be either comic book continuation or could be season nine continuation. See now, Quibble's complaints are starting to already have bearing on us. Uh, Quibble pants, right? What was his name? Quibble, Quibble pants. pants. Quibble pants. All right. <clears throat> the the ultimate irony in that he is not wearing pants. <laughs> but anywho, um, Queen Chrysalis uh, exacts her monologue revenge. And tells her changeling to focus her power so she can, uh, sorry, focus their power to her so she can uh, open a portal or kind of open a portal to invite other changeling from other worlds. That's that's kind of cool. Like, you know, like using a spell, opening a portal to call upon other changelings to come to your world. And help you exact revenge. I, I can dig it. Now we go. To, now we head to another world, where we see Cybertron, and this is getting a bit too old. Where oh, we see the Autobots fighting the Decepticons. We see the Decepticons fighting the Autobots. I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, it's a stalemate. Uh, join us next week when we see the process happen again. Oh, you think it, it's getting old. These guys have been at it for five million years. Yeah, and they still at it. War without end. It's not... Oh, man, like... Oh, man. It's one of those cases where I, I'm just thinking... They're, oh, they're... They're just too dumb. But there, there's a point where they kind of... um worked together to defeat a big bad guy and kind of had a, what you might call this, truce to fight something. Or, or they realized that if they keep on fighting, um, the planet is just going to destroy. So, like, they drew a line, this is our place and that's your place. So, yeah. Are you quoting victory? Ah, no, man. I wish I was. I don't remember shit when I was uh, watching that thing. Why? Is, is is that something from Victory? 
Yeah, they called the truce in victory, but uh, of course the Decepticons broke it oh, right away. Yeah. No, this was something recent from the three D ones, like the recent ones. Oh yeah, the well yeah, you stay on your side, but then they they well, I don't want to give too much away, but basically the Decepticons got the short end of the stick and all of that. Yeah. But anywho, uh continuing on. So <clears throat> um sound no no sound wave. Um who, shockwave. Shockwave um, tells Megatron there's a, a malfunction with the Stargate or Starbeam, something like that? Space Bridge. Space Bridge. And it seems to be malfunctioning and he's trying to figure things out. And somehow, uh, the bridge activated and ported everyone out. Except for Grimlock, because Grimlock is awesome. Is is this a running gag that Grimlock is always late for the party? <laughs> it oh. no, he, he's a Dinobot, so most of the time he's actually locked in a closet. <laughs> okay, Why is um, that? Oh, you think you, you think I'm joking? But yeah, the first two seasons of Transformers, the Dinobots just sat in a closet until they were needed for a fight. Yep. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the idea the, is that they're too too powerful and destructive to just let wander. Al- Wander around, and and in most recent iteration, uh, there's two points of view for Grimlock. Like Grimlock, uh, in one show, Grimlock is not that smart, or they made him dumb, so he's trying to develop. And in another show, Grimlock, the robot, is smart and a genius, but when he transforms into his more primal form. He goes primal. He goes um, what's the word? Caveman on you. So Hulk. it depends on which version you kind of watch. But in this version, the G one version, uh, it, they're going for dumb and silly. <clears throat> so anywho, um, we go back to Equestria and we see. Queen Chrysalis' plans is working. The portal is opening. Suddenly, Twilight Sparkle and her guards uh, fly down and stop the summoning, the magic? I, I, I don't know what it's called. Uh, she tries and s- to stop it, but it's too late because um, blinding lights of whatever uh, flows through the portal and we see... Robots, oh no, and they scattered across all of Equestria, and oh no, uh, that's going to be bad. Twilight just says, Chrysalis, what did you just bring? And we see that um, the bots are falling and falling down, and um, we, we see Twilight saying, uh, those are alive and falling? That's not good. <laughs> Chrysalis, you idiot. What did you do? And she flies away trying to save the falling bots. But to her credit, she doesn't know that they're robots and probably could survive. And she's just doing the right thing. <clears throat> but anyway. Uh, don't, actually, Bumblebee uh, states that they are falling towards their co- surprisingly colorful doom. <laughs> Ah, so they will be so dead. He, All right. Yeah, yeah. He was, he's going to break on impact. This is physics. I don't, I don't care how tough you are. You're basically being dropped from orbit. But Master Chief did it. Master Chief had a uh, shield to block the heat of reentry and was coming from much lower altitude. Was he eating Doritos and drinking Mountain Dew at the same time? Uh, no, he would probably be dead doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, uh, like I mentioned before, Twilight flies off, and we see Queen Chrysalis walking up to her first specimen, and it is Megatron. And oh wow, <laughs> Queen Chrysalis has the right questions to ask. What exactly are you, and how could you be used to me? Oh boy, and Megatron says, "Ditto." Wait, he thinks he's a Pokemon? He must have really hit his head. Yep. 
But anywho, uh, we we see some of the other characters now. Uh, we see Wingblade um, calling in and somehow stumbling across the Wonderbolts. And yeah, the Wonderbolts are kind of like, what are you? And is that a plasma sword? Okay. Uh, on the other page, we see Bumblebee and Optimus Prime holding hands and lamenting how they have failed like uh, Cybertron and stuff until Twilight have saved them from their impending doom. Uh, what was the what was the line that they use after all those uh, after all our battles? I never thought this would be how I got scrapped. It won't be old friend. Uh, take my hand if I can position myself to hit the uh, hit first to <laughs> break your fall. Wow, uh, that that is so prime. Oh, that's just prime. <laughs> yep. But, um, like I mentioned before, Twilight sees this and, ah, oh, man, like, any creatures or any sentient beings who is willing to do that for friendship is okay in my book because I am the princess of friendship, motherfucker. So... <clears throat> Please, Darwin, it's Mother Trotter, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so, anyway, um, Twilight here asks, okay, what's going on and what are you? Um, and they, they have a breakdown of, okay, um, we are beings from the world called Cybertron and we, and our gimmick is we transform into, uh, inanimate object to blend in with the surroundings. So, um, Bumblebee, <laughs> yes, Bumblebee tries and do it and uh, Twilight says, wow, um, not really, but almost everybody would judge you, wouldn't judge you differently. So yeah, that's good. Uh, so Twilight just breaks down and uh, with shifting magic like that, I see why changing some of you. So this is one of those magical, uh, what you call this, magical back, uh, no, mm, uh, feed, no, not feedback, but uh, when things doesn't work. Well, what's the word, Silva? When things don't work? Yeah, there, there's a word. Uh, back. Uh, no, not back, but... F- not feedback. Backlash. Uh, oh, backlash. Uh, another one. I'm, I, I'm forgetting the word. Um, back down? Nah, maybe, maybe it'll come to me. Back, back flow. Macarena. <laughs> hey, hey, Macarena. But no, um, it's just that um, setback, whatever. So, yeah, um, Chrysalis magic kind of work, but not in the intended way. So, she calls for changelings, but instead of changelings, she calls things that can transform. The bots are things that can transform. So, yay, victory there, I guess. Vic- victory is seeing Cream Chrysalis riding a tank that is Megatron. Yeah, I mean, not not since the doctor played a, played his wicked axe on a tank. Uh, have you seen such majesty? I mean, if we could only get Chrysalis to play a guitar with those weird bug hooves, I guess her I guess the holes would get tangled with those cords. But to be honest, right, um, looking at this scene is badass. But for us, uh, old fogies here. When we see this, I'm uh, we're, we're like, wait, why is there a tank? I thought, and once it explains, wait, that's Megatron. I thought Megatron was a gun. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say because I recall when I watched the the series, Megatron transformed into a gun, because I I know that other incarnations of uh, his his of the future series for Megatron is is nothing like the original one. I mean, I guess Hasbro's trying to not show guns in the crossover, but that kind of fails when RC pulls the gun out later down the line. Oh, it's not that. It's the it's the fact parent groups were outraged 
that Megatron transformed into a handgun. A Walter PPK, I think. Mm. But uh, basically, Hasbro endured a great deal of backlash on that because the gun looked so realistic. A kid waving it around could, it could actually be mistaken for wielding a gun. And that's why there's the orange tip, Silver. Well, they don't do the orange tip anymore. Now they just make Megatron a tank. Uh. <laughs> Which honestly fits the character a lot more than turning into a gun. Kind of. Yeah, um, it makes sense in terms of his attitude and power. The whole turning into a gun and letting Starscream use him was kind of confusing in that power dynamic. Exactly. So, yeah, well, while it's not the original in terms of turning into a gun, I don't lament the gun absence. I'm... If anything, I got the war for Cybertron uh, Megatron. It's a pretty clean transformation between him and a tank, almost like it was meant to be. Mm, I'm 50-50 on this. Like, I, I would... Rather him, pref- I would rather him be a tank, but sorry, uh, I would rather him be a pistol than a tank. But a tank is cool too. I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at the review for the Transformers now. Was did Megatron uh, transform into a tank or whatever in Generation Two? Because I'm seeing what I do recall. I saw a toy of this one once before. Uh, Oh yes, they they re-released a brand new Megatron toy. He was green and purple camouflage, which oh. good luck getting that to blend into yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, that one. And he turned into a tank. Oh, well, no. I guess they're trying to fuse Generation Two in the original series. It, the, well, at least they didn't make him green and purple. No, you should. Uh, okay, it's a tank. I understand why, but oh man, the the <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, the logic of this is they needed to make the toy. Looked like, no. They needed to look. I'm sorry. They needed to make Megatron look like the toy, so they had to do this. Because in all honesty, uh, Megatron doesn't look like that. Uh, but you know what? We don't care. We don't care. Uh, apparently, you do. Why? Because you've been talking about it this whole time, so don't just say we don't care. You care. I do. You care. I, I do. Don't get the Care Bears in on this crossover. I do. God dang it. I want him to be a pistol. Okay, you know what? Okay. It could have been cooler if he was a Magnum. P.I.? <laughs> no, but that would be cool too. <laughs> oh, God. Well, maybe from being a tank, kind of, I don't know, it puts me off because I do recall I saw the episode where apparently uh, Starscream found a bunch of uh, World War II vehicles abandoned <coughs> somewhere and then he revived them into his lackeys and one of them was a tank, if I remember. <coughs> yes, it was. yes, that was Starscream's brigade where he made the Combaticons, where a Helicopter somehow turns into a space shuttle. What? One of the uh, one of the World War Two vehicles, a uh, chopper, somehow shifted into a uh, space shuttle to become blast off the Combaticon arm. Okay. <laughs> um. Transformers weird. Look, hey, I, d- I didn't write it. Uh, that, that mentioned before. I'm just I'm just saying it like it is. I'm calling it as I seize it. <laughs> All right, today. So, anywho, uh, moving on to the well next story because the story ends there, and we go to the other one, and the title is "Shine Like a Diamond." So Shine this. Like a diamond. <laughs> Uh, so this, uh, we, we hit to Manhattan outside the Carousel Boutique and we see that Starscream has become Emperor Starscream and trying to force the ponies to um, be his new emperor. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to try to do a Starscream impression, but it's going to be really bad. <clears throat> faster, ponies, faster! I must look my best when I conquer your pathetic backward. 
to you. Oh God, that's gonna hurt my voice. Uh, now you've you've got the shrillness, but not the menace. Yeah, nah, man. Uh, Tom Kenny can. <laughs> Oh man! Who would have thought Tom Kenny would voice Megatron? No, Starscream. I read, honestly, I mean, I only knew Tom Kenny when he voiced Starscream. So eh? yeah, and Cobra Commander. Wait, what? You you didn't knew he was SpongeBob? Okay, dude, wait, you do understand SpongeBob is after my time as a child. But still, it's one of those. And even I. Even I think after my time as a college student, because hmm. I'm sure I'm sure there were some big college students who were avid SpongeBob fans too, but no, no, for me Megatron, Corporate Commander, a <laughs> couple other voices at the very end of the Transformers. Yeah, yeah. Also, his he was a uh, uh, penguin for. Uh, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, talking about uh, continuing on the story. So anyway, um. Starscream here um, decides to ditch Megatron because I think he doesn't know Megatron is in Equestria. So he proclaims himself as the new emperor and tries to, well, conquer it and whatnot. And Rarity is there. Uh, the Snoody review food pony is there. Uh, Coco Pamel is there. The old, all the employees from the Sour Road are there. Yeah. So, even the even the extortionist landlord's daughter. Yeah. So Rarity just says, "Yes, of course, darling. Just don't shoot any more of our block property value and all that." <laughs> God dang it! Now, honestly, meanwhile, I'm screaming, "No, Star Scream! Don't wear that crown. Bad things happen when you wear that crown." Do they? Kind of. Yes. That's the crown he wore in the movie right before Galvatron turned him to ash. Oh. Yep. Yeah, and and that's the crown he wore in Transformers uh, Cybertron, where he basically got sent to a hell dimension. Yeah, but bad things are you. <laughs> so, any. So, bad things happen when he wears that damn crown. Yeah, um. And I guess the bad thing happened again because um, Archie kicked him in the face. But before that, there's this this really fun line where, um, how to say, uh, what is that? I don't think you primitive had cars <laughs> because um, there's a vroom sound coming through, and it's Archie kicking him in the face. Yay. <laughs> Boys. Also, Rarity is handling herself well against Starscream. Well, she's got practice. Yeah, like, man, like, this giant robot can squash you like a bug, and she's sassing him. <laughs> Starscream is weak. Well, he can't still step on you. It's true, but still. Uh... But she's sassing, but also apologizing, you know, walk, walk in a fine line. Mm -hmm. A very fine line. Mm -hmm. But anywho, uh, we, we see Archie beating the crap out of him. Wait, wait. Sorry? I'm sorry, how are you saying her name? Archie? It's R.C. Oh, R.C. Archie is a Riverdale high school guy who gets all the girls for some reason. Yeah, and somehow they made him show into a horror comic now. Yeah, they can do all kinds of things, but uh, R.C. R.C., okay. Ah, okay, Just R. think of a pirate. R.C. here, me hearties. All right, because uh, Chi, C-E-E can also be Chi and stuff. So, yeah. Well, anywho, <clears throat> uh, we see R.C.? R.C.? R.C. R. We see R.C. <laughs> R.C. Oh. Uh, we are seeing RC. Okay, RC, alright. <laughs> Damn! Alright, anywho. Uh, she kicks Starscream's butt and Starscream says, Oh, you'll pay for this, Autobot? Yeah! Run away! <laughs> oh, boy. So, 
uh, he runs away and R C. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. So R C uh, talks to uh, Rarity, and Rarity just says thanks for your assistance and whatnot, and she helps clean up the mess for a bit. And Rarity says, "Oh no, that won't be necessary." And R C just says, uh, "I'm not. Uh, I'm afraid not very. Uh, I'm not very handy with with pairs, especially in your style of masonry and so on." And they, they, they do talk for a bit and whatnot. And they seem to be getting along really well. Uh, Rarity introduces him, uh, herself. Uh, and they banter for a bit because Rarity wants to know what's an Autobot and so on. And RC just says, to put it simply, we're protectors. We come from a far off world called Cybertron. I'm no expert, but we may have been from a different dimension than yours. And RC is just smitten by the, uh, what you call this, cloth. And, <clears throat> oh man. Fabric? Fabric, yes. Uh, and Rarity has ideas like, oh, I can dress you. Ooh, new client. Yay. Uh, so, um, uh, they they keep talking, and this is kind of fun. Like just just looking at them banter is fun. Yes, but let's cut that short because who wants to see bots talking? Yeah, that's boring. <laughs> so we see Starscream with his friends coming back and shooting an RC. Uh, Rar- uh, RC tells Rarity to take cover because. She can handle them, but Rarity says, nah, no, 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 I, I can help, and poodles up a shield. And can Rarity do this? I mean, she did use it against Chrysalis at some point. Did she? In the final battle. Oh, huh. I guess. Yeah. Diamond-themed shielding. It's fashionable and functional. Mm, yes, yeah, I remember. So, yay. Uh, uh, Rarity pulls up a shield. And yeah, now I remember because this is season 9 Rarity where she upgraded her tech. So now she knows the shield spell. So, yay. <clears throat> so, anywho, uh, she pulls up a shield for RC. And uh, RC has time to shoot the um, Decepticons. And... Oh wait, wait! This is this is good trivia. This is this is a good test for you both. All right. Who did she shoot? Oh, I don't know, dumbass one. Well, I already failed because I hardly recall any names except for the really big ones. This really big one. This was the terrible trio. Those the original seekers. Oh, I weep for both of you in your nerdology. Oh man, like they're not that popular. That's why. That's that popular. Come on. Okay. I'll just say it for our audience. Right. The blue one, the one who goes, ah, I'm hit, mm-hmm. is Thundercracker. Thundercracker. All right. And the black one is Skywarp. If I'm not mistaken, there's a female of that variant, is it? The, uh, she did not show up until Transformers animated. Uh, oh. Really now? Way, way, way. So wait, later she wasn't two thousand. She wasn't animated. Bot. She was. She wasn't a part of this for a long time. So basically, she was in animated, and then they retroactively inserted her in the quote unquote future slash past. Something like that. Yeah, this is a generations comic, so. Uh, what that means is that basically any Transformer from any franchise might pop up. Doesn't matter what continuity they were in, now they're all lumped together in this one. Ah, all right. So timeline be them then. Again, again giving some legitimacy to Quibble's complaints earlier. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. All right. Good to know. So Thundercracker and who now? Skywarp. Skywarp. All right. I mean, names the, are so cool. The, fa- the fact that you, 
The fact that you guys don't know this is just adding to my bitterness as an old man. <laughs> Your kids today don't know a sky warp from a thundercracker. To be honest. Oh, I get yeah, that. That explains why he just suddenly poofs out of existence out of nowhere. In the next few panels. Sky oh, yes, warp. The, yeah, sky warp has the ability to teleport. Oh, cool. <laughs> Honestly, why he... Why he bothers flying when he can teleport, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's the same thing as the Flash wanting a car. <laughs> if you can run faster than a car, why you want a car? Do you know how tiring it is? <laughs> <laughs> but how many calories it burns. Yeah, but anywho. So Rarity grabs the fabric and wraps the jets around and make them go spinning. And like Jacob says, oh, uh, Thunder, uh, Shed, Sky, Sky, Skywarp. Skywarp has the uh, ability to teleport and GTFOs, leaving Starscream in a pile of mess. Actually, I guess he rage quits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in the distance, you can hear Edna from uh, Incredible screaming, no capes! <laughs> <laughs> yep. <sighs> And uh, the two of them uh, kind of bonded and be friends. Yay! And with that, our comic ends. Yay! That's awesome. Like, uh, alright, alright, alright. Before I gush and praise the comic, uh, let's move on to final thoughts. Silver, what do you think? Well, in a lot of crossovers, you have that moment of confusion between the protagonists leading to the inevitable nerd fight. Everybody wanting to know who would win or how would they gain the upper hand. I appreciate that that's not a thing in this uh, comic series, mostly because, well, My Little Pony, they're not looking to start a fight, and they're usually smart enough to l watch and study a situation before making a snap judgment. Mm -hmm. So good for them. Uh Good for uh, Optimus and Bumblebee making peace with uh, with uh, Twilight. Twilight, mm -hmm. and then Rarity and RC. I think that the idea behind this crossover is that they're the most that they're the quote girls of each team. Rarity the most feminine, and Tw and RC the. Uh, Oh, for fuck's The most female-looking one? Feminine? The most, sorry, I had a... Sorry, I have a friend who's trying to call me. Oh, sorry. Uh, but... Why don't I try it? Yes, RC is the... She's not the first female Autobot, but she was the main female Autobot. Mm. Um, I kind of see your point and kind of agree, but not really, because we are introduced to... Storm, storms. Uh, who who's the name? Uh, Windblade. Yes, we're introduced to Windblade, and technically she looks feminine too. So yeah, I guess. Uh, be believe me, I'll have things to say about the Windblade uh, part of this, but Windblade is a more recent edition. But also RC across multiple iterations. I mean, the RC in G1 is, may seem like a very different RC than Transformers Prime. Mm -hmm, true. Or even Robots in Disguise. And then, wow, the IDW comics, they really they really made her the symbol of many a movement. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Within the, within the IDW continuity, she is both a transgender mm -hmm. and a lesbian. Mm -hmm. Also, don't forget... She turns into a spider once. What? Yes, that yeah, that was in the uh, beat botcon exclusive comics. <laughs> oh, also don't forget she was a motorcycle. Yeah, Transformers Prime. No. Oh yeah, that's Michael one I Bay. Do remember. Michael Bay. Uh, yeah, I never watched any of the Michael Bay movies. <laughs> I'm just like you know, Archie's interesting because she herself depending on which one you look personally for me i always known her as a girl so i'm gonna call her she 
Um, she she's been almost every uh, like she, she she's been a lot like she's been through a lot, and yeah, just looking at her here as her original intended form is just awesome. Like yeah, uh, you got the Princess Leia look, so yay cool, and uh, nothing to complain about. Pink is. <sighs> It's one. It's the times, man. It's the times. When she was created, it was the times. Yeah, but why would you spite the character design for just being pink? Because that was the times. Because this was done in the early seventies or late seventies. So when you oh, that, that... when you're marketing to girls, or at least just showing that oh, this bot is a girl, you do pink. You do pink. Although it was the eighties, thank ah. you very much. I'm not that old. But no, I thought the show came out early, no, late seventies. No, it was eighties. Eighties. It was eighties. Oh, okay. Eighties. All of the things came 80s. out from the eighties. Early eighties then. Oh, mask was the one that was came in the late seventies. Sorry, my bad. Mask was another fun show, and fun toys. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Sorry, still but, carry uh, on. <laughs> Well, most here's the thing. No matter what her presentation or iteration, one of the things very clear with RC is that she becomes uh, a pater- a paternal figure, a caregiver. She won. RC looks after uh, Daniel as sort of a secondary mother. RC of Transformers Prime looks after uh, Jack and is very protective of him. Uh, even though he goes on quite quite a few more dangerous adventures than uh, Daniel. RC of Robots in Disguise found great fascination with the animals of, uh, of Earth and was very caring for them. That is consistent with RC, and I see that happening in her character in this issue. I'm less thrilled with how Rarity is talking about her various adventures when RC seems to have the market cornered on action uh, during this part. Mm, I see what you mean. I mean, when R.C. says Starscream's all talk, well, Rarity seems all talk as well until she finally can back it up with Diamond Shield. <clears throat> yeah. But at the same time, too, like, it's it, it's one of... It, it's the debut comic syndrome where you, you want to establish why the audience bought the comic. You want to establish um, this is the reason why they spend five dollars? Was it? Oh no, there's no pricing here. Uh, I'm guessing it's three ninety nine, right, or four ninety nine? As uh, something to that effect. Yeah. So you, they, you, they want new people to come in. Uh, well, basically for ponies and fan of Transformers to read and see why this comic was even made in the first place. Um, but carry on, Silver. I, I'll have my. I'll save my thoughts when I, it's my turn. It's also interesting to note the difference in art style. Uh, early in the first half, where this is starting, it's Tony Fleece doing the artwork, and he's got more experience drawing ponies than Transformers. And talking with him, it, it's kind of funny how the different moods, uh, or rather, different styles, affect one another. You wind up with Transformers who maybe are a little bit softer or organic curve. Uh, I'm looking at Optimus's approach in the in the first Cybertron panel, <laughs> whereas the ponies can become a bit more rigid or uh, straight lines. And then you switch to RC and Rarity, which was art is done by let's see here by Jack Lawrence. Mm-hmm. Now Jack is clearly a Transformers artist, as he's drawing a great deal of detail on our, in our C, and the buildings are very straight line. He does a good job with Rarity uh, drawing the very and the various ponies, but you can tell he's used to drawing straight lines and a more rigid uh, format. But to be yeah, that- sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, well, it's pretty much what I said at the start, that there's two different teams working on this one. And it's it clearly shows half the way through. And to be honest, I kind of enjoy uh, enjoy that. Um, because after watching or after reading Generations, I'm glad that this didn't go the way of Generations. Yeah, we can all agree on that one. <laughs> yeah, that that's an auto. Uh, yeah, it's, it's true that uh, the ponies here seems a bit... Uh, well, they don't, they don't seem how like we usually see them. But you you don't really question that when you see the goings-on, uh, the things that are attracting your view from... or distracting your views from the ponies. Uh, example, uh, like the first page, Shine Like a Diamond. You, you clearly see Starscream, big menacing and like big wind windbag or whatever it is and and wearing the crown where bad things happen yeah and the ponies are small uh, minuscule they're doing stuff and you, you don't really pay attention to that because that's not the focus your eyes is clearly looking at the big giant robot and then when we see starscream talking to rarity you you kind of uh don't really realize that Starscream is well drawn. He's shaded, while Rarity is not. Like in the minimal, yeah, minimal, and so on. Like in the second panel, she is, but not that much. Not not to the point where Starscream has black splotches on the neck, like just just covering certain things. And Archie coming in, like you mentioned before, Silver, you can clearly tell who drew what. Yeah, but you also have to take into account that the shading for metals, uh, there are different rules than for, uh, well, other things. Yeah. Organics? Yeah. Fleshy bits? Or just inanimate objects. Oh. oh. But yeah, for the robots, shading is uh, completely different oh. than everything else. That's fascinating. Sorry, um, I'm just looking at the colorist because... Uh, for the colors for Shine Like a Diamond, uh, the artist is Jack Lewis, but the colorist is uh, Lou, sorry, Jack Lawrence. Um, colorist is Luis Antonio Delgado. And you can clearly tell that that's uh, his bread and butter when it comes to Transformers. Uh, for the color by uh, so Transformers and Magic, uh, Tony Fleece did the color and also... Uh, Colors flat by Lauren Perry. <clears throat> Just thought I, I pointed that out. Well, there you there you go. So, anywho, uh, but, uh, yeah, anything more to add, Silver? I just thought it's fun and well. Okay, now, I, the one thing is star screen. I feel like. There's you could substitute just about any Decepticon uh here and have them be rival for RC. Starscream deserved better in that he needed to be in his full antagonistic force and lying and scheming. <laughs> and for that I feel he's better suited as Applejack's opponent. Oh, okay. To be honest, I was thinking about Queen Chrysalis. <laughs> Yeah, but well, but he also have a giant ego. Yeah, he does, and he could. But he could also lie to all the ponies and say, "Oh, I'm here to protect you from the evil Autobots." <laughs> oh, yeah, but when you're they already decide when you can step on them white water line. At this point. Well, see, that's why I think you deserve better than this. Mm. Okay, I, I I get your point, and yeah, honestly, okay, but but that doesn't make this call. Uh, that, sorry, that doesn't make this issue bad because we we came up with ideas and whatnot but honestly what we got here was decent honestly sorry. i didn't say this comic was bad yeah 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 but but, but better ideas I'm, that's the thing i'm just yeah there i just have a strong opinion for uh star scream to have more of a spotlight yeah. here he's more a goon but he's the Decepticon. Of all the characters that embody Decepticonism, even more than Megatron, Starscream is that guy. Yeah. Oh, I, I, something just came up in my head. <clears throat> Sorry. 
uh, something just came into my head and uh, the best pairing you could give Starscream is actually Flim and Flam. <laughs> and you could work with them. Yeah. Either he or, either he or Swindle. Swindle? He was a Combaticon who actually sold the scrap parts of his defeated allies for money. Oh, That's a new one, I guess. Or maybe not a popular one. I think the Combaticons were popular. It's just that you know them collectively. Hmm. All right. Anything more to add, Silver? Uh, no. Well, I could go on and on about quoting Transformers trivia. <laughs> uh... But anywho, uh, let's let's move it along. And Jacob, what about you? Well, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else that can be added beyond what Silver just said. I mean, to be sweet and short, the comic was good. <laughs> there's really that much to say. Oh, that's so true. It is true. I mean, it is good. It is good. Like, issue one is good. Oh my god, I just remember the one with... Fluttershy, that's even better. Oh, the future issues. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. And that, we're going to get to that, that eventually. That was going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So, anywho. Um, nothing more to add? Uh, yeah, I'm done. All right. As for me, this comic here is just a lot of fun. Uh, as a fan of both IPs, this is one of those things where, wow, uh, I would have never thought about joining these two in um, a story, but they kind of made it work. And the way that um, Silver mentioned that the ponies are kind of look before acting does, does play a part with how they approach the problem here. And yeah... It, this is a lot of fun. Like, this is a lot of fun. But the way that the story is told is a bit confusing. It, there's a lot of cliffhangers going on. We, we start off with uh, Megatron, uh, Chris is riding on Megatron, and then we continue on with Starscream kind of trying to dominate Manhattan. So, there's a lot of questions of timing, like how fast things are going on like what's the time period for this is is it going to be a few days few hours or whatever it is well look at it this way at least it's not guardians of harmony uh, oh what guardians of harmony was fine no was it no yeah. silver or what it was yeah that's the annual silver the one where they tried to sell the toys. Yeah, that was, you know, it was what it tried to be. Sell the toys, have ponies. I don't know what, what you were you were expecting more. No, no, no. I, I think the biggest problem that we're highlighting here is the part where it uh, it takes the Wonder Bolts riding on a experimental jet to hit to the Crystal Empires. Next issue, we see Shining Armor trotting to Ponyville. What? <laughs> oh, I always figured he just stole one of the uh, one of those hyper sleds. No. Just kind of see him rocketing past the window while Spitfire and, and Cadence watch. <laughs> uh, I, I mean... <laughs> They, here's the thing, like, we, we, uh, if I would have believed that, but no, but no. Shining, Shining Armor mentioned that, oh, he trotted all the way, or he said ran all the way from the Crystal Empire to here. So it's like, mm, no. In which case, he's got amazing stamina, which I'm sure Cadence can vouch for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you would think that, but... Yeah. <sighs> but well, either which way, I mean, Guardians of Harmony was it was a toy sale. Mm -hmm. I thought it did fine for a toy oh, sale. Oh yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just that uh, the story is a bit disappointing. Inconsistency. Yep. Well, if you're if we're talking inconsistency, then we, you'll definitely 
have words for uh, Windblade. Oh God! When we get to her, when we get to her all part. Right, all right. Yeah, we'll get there. And let's see here. Well, yeah, uh, Windblade's the only one who really communicates. Oh, and if you want other consistency, what happened to the poor guard who is holding on to RC as uh, she's rocketing away? Uh, probably he got flip off, like um, the. But she she flipped him up. Why would she shoot him the bird? I don't know. <laughs> Why are you imparting such crude gestures to RC? She's a lady, Norman. How dare the internet's done worse, my friend. <laughs> Believe me, I could show you some pictures of fan made RC <laughs> figures that yeah, oh, okay. that would apply. I almost <sighs> I, I, here's the thing. I almost bought a China RC. China RC? Why? Because it looks good. Okay, here's the thing about Transformer toys that um, some of you might not know. The official Transformers toys are good. But the... I'm saying China as a whole. It's probably Hong Kong or something like that. But uh, the Chinese quote-unquote knockoffs are much better in quality. It's rare that I hear that. Uh, usually, it's the opposite. I... He, True, but Silver, uh, on your free time, uh, try just Googling Transformers Chinese toy or something like that. And and just go to down, down to the rabbit hole and looking at people saying that, oh, this looks good. This is uh, the design for this one is better, blah, 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 so on. Uh, whoa, whoa. Well, I'll believe me. When you see what people have tried to do with a with a bootleg RC, ah, yeah. So th this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, this is for RC. Uh, there's other version. I think they did the uh, constructor cons. Most likely, I believe me. I I watch a reviewer called Mgo. And he does reviews of all these. They're called third party yes, that's what I mean. transformers. So I don't know if knockoff is quite the same. It's not an imitation of the figures. It's a much greater uh, enhancement. Yeah, unofficial. So, but yes, I know. I know of that market and the sheer. Boy, uh, what was it? Both Trypticon and Scorpion oh, yeah. city sized Transformers. They had stuff and they're like $500 a piece. But the quality worked of that. Like, yeah, man. The quality worked, but at the same time, one, they're so huge, I have no idea where to store it, and I don't have $500 to, to spend on a Transformer. Have you seen the one with uh, the planet one? What was it? Galvatron? No, not Galvatron. Unicron. Unicron. Have you seen that one? Yes, from the HasLab? I think so, yeah. Yes, it is. It has been much anticipated by many people. Quite quite uh, celebrated. Okay. As far as I know, people are gaga for it's it. It's huge. Oh, yeah. It's meant to be. Come on, it's it's supposed to be Unicron, the, the Transformer devil. Yep, the, the toy is huge. Like, wow. Uh, th this reminds me of a Gundam before. Uh, oh man, uh, I, I think it's what um, it's, I, I forgot the name. Noble Gundam. Uh, there, there's a. It came from the Unicorn series, where the toy or, or the model is stupid huge, like almost five feet tall. Oh well, then that probably is the Unicorn Gundam because it. Transforms. Not not Sinanju uh, Zasasabi. I'm trying to uh, uh, give me a second while I'll try and find it. Uh, talk among yourselves for a bit. Uh, talk about the comics. <laughs> I feel I feel we've talked about the comics. We yeah, we shouldn't the line. Oh man, uh, I'm I'm just trying to find it. Well, we we don't put. <clears throat> uh, oh man you know I'm just giving up I'm just giving up so anywho yes um, my review very good go go read 
Uh, so anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themishowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Hi, uh, you can find me in many places. You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. My YouTube will also link to my Patreon and Ko-fi, where you can support after the fact. Uh... And let's see, if you are, happen to be in Seattle or Bellevue, Washington, uh, the final weekend of uh, August, you will get to, I will see you at Everfree Northwest, hopefully. Wow. It'll be a fantastic time. Awesome, awesome. Guys, if you're heading there, go meet up with Silver, say hello, buy merch, and take pictures. Uh, is this a mass event kind of thing? It is, and I have purchased a mask that looks like a beak. Nice. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, so that'd be good times. Yeah. Although I don't know how to look going to the airport that way. I don't know. Is it okay, Silver? I, this is off topic for a bit, but I just want to know: when you go out, how many people out there? How many percentage of people do you think, like when you go out, are still wearing a mask? Well, they've actually they've removed mask restrictions for most places. So I find that usually it's uh, it's just staff at restaurants who are wearing masks these days. Mm. So basically the people, the general public uh, who are wearing masks is about 5% probably? Yeah, pretty, maybe even lower. All right. Just wondering because it's one of those things where over here in my place, I'm starting to see some people kind of not want to wear a mask anymore. So the, the number is still high, like uh, 85, 89 probably percent of people who still wear a mask because uh, there's a rule mm-hmm. where uh, if you go into a mall, you still have to wear a mask and stuff like that. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't... Vaccination has co- been coming along in my neck of the woods... But I don't know what the figures are at this point. I do know that thanks to vaccination and treatments, COVID is not the death sentence it originally was. True that. Or the, the huge risk. But even still, ugh, I intend to wear a mask in an airport because even then, oh. even if it's not, uh, even if it's not mandatory. Airports are human petri dishes on a good day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You got no idea who comes where from where. But anywho, also, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Deviant Art under the username Yakafon Todkar or on the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Turmoil Rising, you can find it on uh, finvision.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Random question. Uh, we kind of know that you have a, a hostel or homestay or something like that. It's true, right? Apartments. Apartment, all right. Apartments. So, um, how is the mask mandate over there? Like... Uh, are visitors in forced to wear a mask when they go outside the room, or no? Nah, in my country, the mask restrictions have pretty much been almost completely loosened. The only time you're going to find somebody wearing a mask are the, some of the elderly people on public transportation. Ah, all right, then. Huh, different in... Okay, interesting. All right, all right, all right. Just, just a random question. So anyway, guys, go follow him... Uh, there if you want to read good stuff and be entertained yeah uh, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes YouTube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also stitch radar and select our Facebook page you can also catch us on live.com links will be in the show notes if you'd like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash FBS show with every support you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about the thank yous I would like to thank you Jacob Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. 
So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I'm Yalka. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Now, let's see if there is a Transformer pony. Uh, there are two. Are they? I, I like how you quickly answered that, like you had it on standby. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Mock Kick. And there was another one. One that actually came with brushable hair and was uh, purple. Uh, please do show. I, I, I am very curious. Let's see here. Hold on. Let's see here. Apparently the name is Strata. Okay. So here's Strata. Oh, and Jacob got Mock Kick. Okay. Um. Uh, ha, ha, ha. It looks like a Decepticon? Oh, Pred- Predacons? Yeah, he's from Beast Wars. And he's a ma- ma- Mock Kick is a Maximal. Maximal. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Oh, have you. Okay, um, there, um, there is a very. Uh, spoiler, 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 spoiler. Don't look at the uh, magic. Uh, no, I'm not talking about that. Like, uh, I'm just looking at one panel where. Um, there's a horse, there's wing blade, there's rainbow dash. What? Yeah, nah, yeah, that's what I told you. Don't, don't look at that. <laughs> yeah, don't uh, just give it oh. time. We'll get there. Okay, well, no, but 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 the give, thing is, give it time. But, but the thing is, like, going into that and looking at that is like, wait, what? Now I'm curious. You're not, you're not giving it time. <laughs> give it time. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. <laughs>